Hi! Um, so for my project, I was doing it on the La Mama Experimental Theatre Club. Um, this is a picture of the outside of one of the theatres they have. There's actually two theatres they have. Um, the first one is located 66 East 4th Street, and the second one is located on 74A East 4th Street, and that's between Bowery and 2nd Avenue. There's actually a third venue they have, um, which is on 47 Great Jones Street, but that one is um, more of a gallery for art, um, while they do have some performances and things there. Um, it's more for uh, the visual arts, um, which is also included in theater, so um, as we go through this presentation, um, we'll see that the Little Mama Experimental Theater Club is really about um, inclusivity and um, promoting all of the art forms, um, but we're going to focus mostly on productions within those first two locations. So let's get started. And this is Ellen Stewart. Uh, she is the original founder of the theater club, and um, she founded the Cafe La Mama um, originally to help her brother Fred Frederick Light. Um, she was actually a dress designer before and had very little interest in theater, um, but she just wanted to help out her brother, so she was like, hey, why not? Let's start this thing. Um, she really didn't want the influence of like critics and commercial interests to come in. Um, just wanted to get some good old theater out there and um, not really care what other people were saying about it. So she founded and directed the La Mama Theater um, for 50 years. This is a picture of her in front of the uh, original La Mama. Um, she's known as the mother of off-off-Broadway theater. And a fun fact about her is she actually didn't start directing until 1985, which is 24 years after she founded the theater club. Um, she died at the age of 91 on January 13th in 2011. Uh, so the, the theater club actually started in a basement in 1961, and this is a picture from a circular story in 1980s. And this is what it looks like today. Uh, up and coming, you'll see some pictures from other uh, productions that show more of the basement area on the other theater, but this is just one of them. Um, it's off off-Broadway, meaning that it holds less than 99 seats in it, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's like, I think some people have this misconception that theater that's not on Broadway isn't professional or whatever, but that's not necessarily true. It just means that there's less people sitting there. So yeah, so the La Mama stage has actually been the influential in getting a lot of uh, huge productions out there, including, um, I think one of the best known ones is Godspell, uh, which ended up going on to off-Broadway just so there were more people who could see it. The La Mama Theater has produced over 5,000 productions over the years, and it just most recently completed its 15th season. Um, over here we have a picture on the left, it's uh, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, or How Not to Do It Again, and on the right, is Bake. Uh, don't know if I pronounced that right, but can't find them. Um, these are all taken from the La Mama archive, which has so many pictures of just productions from the very beginning up till now. Um, so it's all pretty cool. I liked these two in particular because they featured uh, artists of color, um, and um, they were also produced by artists of color, um, like Bakke was produced by a Japanese theater company. Um, so the La Mama Experimental Theater Club, uh, their mission is basically they're dedicated to all aspects of theater, um, a creative home to artists and audiences from around the world, and a dynamic hub for risk-taking new performance. Um, so yeah, so the risk-taking new performance, obviously. Um, they're actually the only original off-off-Broadway venue that's still operating and on the La Mama About page there is a quote that's in 2018 the American Theatre Wing presented the La Mama with the Regional Theatre Tony Award recognizing us as the influential company that helped give birth to off-off-Broadway movement. La Mama has also been honored with more than 30 OB awards and dozens of drama desk messy and village awards. So yeah um they're pretty important in a lot of avant-garde theaters and getting some important playwrights and um, actors out into the world because um, they might not have had an opportunity otherwise. Um, 
so a more recent production that went up and I'll show another one at the end um, but that one's a video so uh, more recent production as uh, Jermaine Economy uh, somewhere at the beginning and it was produced at La Mama on September 26, 2019 um, so she is actually considered the mother of contemporary African dance um, in this production it was a mix of African history woven into her own life narrative. And so I thought that one was pretty cool and um, it looked pretty interesting. Um, here there's like projections and stuff and it's a dance performance as well. As far as any upcoming performances, um, they kind of have a whole section talking about how COVID-19 has affected them. Um, but they actually have some online happenings going on. Um, so we'll go ahead and head over there. Um, so over here, there's, um, that already happened. <laughs> so there's the La Mama kids again, and um, some of these things. And then this one's kind of interesting. Um, so I kind of wanted to highlight that. It's the Poetry Electric. Um, so basically, um, this core uh, is doing a poetry stream from her bedroom. And... Um, in her corner, ha ha ha, um, yeah, and so I think it's kind of a cool way that we can get involved since we don't really live in New York, um, and, but that's one of the cool things about uh, all the theater people getting together is that we all live in different areas, but we can experience theater from all different parts of the world. The reason I chose this um, nonprofit was it it's really a large influencer on like avant-garde theater and it integrated like music dance and drama all into one so it didn't just produce uh like straight plays or like strict theater have rules like she literally let anybody do whatever they wanted there um, because she was really into letting people be creative um she being ellen stewart the founder um and it really enabled a lot of playwrights and artists to present their works when they otherwise wouldn't be able to. Um, especially women, people of color, people who had different sexualities, gender identities than what was normally accepted at the time. Um, as early as 1965, there was queer performance in um, the La Mama um, venues. Um, and there's always been, uh, and a lot of the pictures that I'm putting on here are from uh, performances from people of color, like the one in the background here is the Chinese Mysterious Official um, by Suji Teriyama. Um, and I think that this theater is really accepting and open to creative ideas and willing to let other people present and show what they have without being discriminated against or scrutinized for not having um, what the audience wants or anything like that. It's just there to present things. Um, there's actually a quote that I found um, from Sam Shepard, who's a playwright, and he said, I could bring something written in on an envelope and Ellen would put it on in the next day. Um, and that was just him attesting to how um, generous she was when she was producing things in her theater and just wanting to let everybody um, create theater. This picture is from Trojan Woman, produced in 1997 at the Korea Drama Center. Uh, the reason I picked this picture to show you guys was because I really wanted to highlight that the La Mama Theater Club wasn't just for Americans or those who lived in New York. Um, it really branched out to include all different nationalities and um, go international to produce theater everywhere. Um, so a lot of the productions produced in the New York venues are of international playwrights and um, actors and um, Ellen Stewart, uh, most commonly in Korea, but other places as well, um, was able to produce different theater so that it was really for everybody. It wasn't just one group of people. Now, this is another production um, that they actually have a section called La Mama Kids, which um, is basically a program that helps kids um, get into theater and be involved in that. So I'm going to play this clip and it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Oh. Uh -huh. 
then here's the boring page.